Hello guys, Preston here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the different openers in patch 14.1 and what to play them into. Okay, so for this patch there's a lot of viable things that you can play into. I, I basically just have like everything here, sort of like, like their ideal items so you get like a general gist of like what items you should be looking for when you aim like towards something or like towards a specific comp. Let's start off with the one cost. Silver reroll is playable, uh, Olaf reroll is playable, any reroll is viable. Secondly, um, Bard, like Bard Kaisa duo is viable, you reroll for both of them. Twitch, like obviously like, like Twin Terra Twitch, you can even play Executioners, but like Executioners is not really like a Twitch comp if unless you're playing Twin Terrors. Uh, Executioners is more so like um like a Samira Vex comp. Nar reroll is playable. Ribbon reroll, Samira reroll, Vex reroll, Yone reroll. And for all these workouts are viable, it's just different like sort of synergies, I, I would say. Like I put Ari in here just because of Ari, like Ari melee super fan flex. I put Zed in here like for 80 flex, like sort of like the old patch, like how Ezreal, Caitlyn were like, was like the best duo in this patch for 80 flex, Ezreal, Zed is the best duo. Twisted Fate, viable. And then I put Viego, Karthus as viable. I didn't put a Kali in here because she's like an add-on, like, like, say, say like, um, like, like if you're playing on Ari, you play K like you're playing KDA or, or for Karthus, uh, Viego, sort of an add-on. I think she's like less of a, less of a priority in um the comps. She's kind of just like there with like lots of the items uh, with like your leftover stuff most of the time, unless it's like, you know, she's like your strongest carry, then you play towards it. There's definitely a lot of like viable things that you can play this patch. And I think the openers are pro like stage two is probably like, the most important part of the patch right now. So on this slide, I have like a T I made like a tier list kind of, of like the different chosens. Uh, at the top, we have Olaf and Tarek. I put Tarek twice just because it's like, he's really flexible with items that you can put onto him. You can use a lot of different items and he's just, he's just like a really strong one cost chosen right now. I guess like the A tier, I would put like Vi, Nami, Annie, and Yasuo. I got buffed as well this patch. She is really strong. Nami, also really strong. Back with a disco line for obvious reasons. Annie is also extremely strong. It's because only the emo trait Annie, in my opinion. Like it, it, basically, Annie is a viable one cost chosen if she has emo activated. Yasuo as well. Yasuo is viable as an item holder early, like just playing reroll Yasuo. Evelyn, I put, this is like, is in like the, the B tier. Evelyn, Quirky, Jinx, and Kaysante. Evelyn is really situational, uh, basically only enabled by Superfan. Otherwise, I wouldn't really recommend her. Quirky is similar to last patch. He, he's like a strong backline carry with for 80 items if you have the proper frontline for him. Uh, Jinx as well. Kaysante. I didn't know whether to put Kaysante in A or B simply because of the heart steel tag. It, it, early econ is can never be like such a bad thing. So it's like, it's hard to like justify like whether Kaysante belongs in A or B, depending on like how you view him or like how you are like treating him. Like purpose, like either as like a carry or, or for like the heart steel tag. For for the heart steel tag alone, heart steel chosen, I would put him in A. But, like outside of like heart steel, I'd probably put him in B. These guys down here, I wouldn't really recommend clicking on them unless it's like super situational. Like, you know, like you're planning to play around like three country early game. Um, You have upgraded backliners already and you just need frontline. Kennen is viable that. And Lilia is, is like the worst of the bunch, in my opinion. Now onto the two cost chosens. Uh, I have Kale at the top, Seraphine, Garen, Nar, and Kaisa. Kale is a really strong mid game holder for AP items. They just made her really strong. Seraphine reroll is viable, it's situational, like some good matchups, some bad matchups. And she's pretty strong with the viable openers right now with as well as like the item slams with a uh, super fan being a viable opener garen is a just a strong frontliner strong like a strong frontliner that can use lots of the lot, lots of items well right now he's good with lots of the like viable viable items right now nar i put here nar is also extremely strong with the change that they gave to nar where he is targeted less often because our last patch how it worked was when he jumped he would take aggro even if like you put him behind like a certain unit just because like the way the the coding worked for him but now he, he like it happens like it still happens but it just happens less compared to before kaisa still an s tier with the correct items she's a demon bard i put an a just because he holds a lot of the ap items well right now and like, but, like bard reroll is viable it's just extremely situational and essentially it's augment i would say like bard kaisa is like an augment check like you would need something let's say like um march of progress in order to to play bard like normally i wouldn't recommend rerolling bard out of like nowhere unless it's like you're you feel like you're really high rolling it or like you have that's jazz senna i have a tier as well she's an extremely strong item holder always has been it's i wouldn't recommend rerolling her i've seen success with center reroll but i i don't know i just feel like in like the current meta she's like not that good i like to end on Katarina is viable because of like the like the item slams. Like she is clickable for sure. With especially with the two crowd diver change, you can definitely look to run her as like a mid game AP item holder. Although she is weaker compared to lots of the other ones, which is why she belongs in B tier. Ragus, I put in B tier. He's just like really tanky. He's also a disco unit, which is a an extremely strong opener right now. Otherwise, if, if Disco wasn't like that strong of an opener right now, he'd probably be in the bottom with the others. I didn't know whether to put a Felios. 
Okay, Aphelios as a chosen unit by himself is in C tier, but like with the Hearthstone tag, you know, he'd be up here in A tier. So it's like this one also depends on like how you use them, whether it's like a like an actual carry or like the Hearthstone trait. He belongs in two different categories. Pantheon, I don't really need to say much about this guy. And Jax is, I don't need to say much about him either. On to the first opener. The first opener that we're going to cover is Disco, and what Disco involves is Tarek and Nami. And over here, I have the essentially the core. I put Gragas in here. Like you don't need Gragas, but it's like he's like an easily accessible Disco chosen or a Disco unit on stage two. But you don't always need him just because it's like you have access to three Disco, which is extremely strong early with just like Disco chosen. I put him in here for like just because like to elaborate on like these two. But basically, you like you can have either chosen here, Tarek or Nami, and you can work around this. I I wouldn't recommend Dazzler Nami. I would really recommend only like sometimes you just take you have to take Dazzler Nami because like your opener is too good with a Nami too and you need a chosen. Otherwise, I would really recommend like trying to only play from the disco opener, a disco dazzler. I probably say you click on dazzler Nami maybe like one, maybe two out of ten times you're offered it onto the, the viable openers. I will start off with number one here. If you have Tarek chosen, you like disco Tarek chosen, you obviously want to pair him with a guardian if you can. He's extremely strong. Easily accessible guardian is Kennen. He's by far the most accessible one. I wouldn't like Pantheon, like if you do get him, but like Kennen is better just because he has CC. Pantheon is just like not like that good of a unit. Kennen actually like offers CC as well as enables some other things, which I will get into. Another way to play this, if you have like Terra chosen, if you like have an Annie too, she can hold AP items, like for the six, for example. Like basically, Annie only needs emo, like ideally, what really wants emo trait active. Otherwise, she's like extremely, extremely mid. With emo trait activated, she becomes a lot stronger, which is why, like, say you have like an Amumu. Like, you don't really need the spell we were trait activated for Annie if you have items for her. She just has high single target, and they like this patch they made her her single target better, or like her first like four beams better, and her second part of her spell where she becomes like the Super Saiyan. They made that like, that weaker to compensate like for her front to back damage. Like they made it more front loaded instead of like extremely back loaded. And she's just a good unit with AP items early. And she pairs well like with a Mumu Terra, like this it's Guardian. She does really well with the attack speed as well, which is why she's strong in the disco opener. The attack speed as well as front line, which is what like everything that she is looking for. Ideally, it's into Twisted Fate or Karthus. You know, you just play you just play around like this mid game. And if to pivot into Karthus from an opener like like Karthus, Akali Viego, like that super fan card this uh to pivot into a card opener like that you have to know like what are the conditions that you need in order to switch the switch into that comp and the main condition is for the Karthus comp, like while you're like playing this opener, is holding Lilias. Lilias are the one of the hardest units to find on level eight because of this, just like the board that you're looking to land on. The Karthus board doesn't really run Cannon, which is why you don't need to hold Cannon as, as much. It's more so just Lilia. It's basically like the games with Fate or Karthus. You need the like the shitters of the comp, and the shitters of the comp are Lilia and Tarek Nami. When you're playing the Disco opener and you're trying to lean into Karthus, say like Disco is way too contested, you'd rather pivot into Karthus. Like you have a viable spot to play Karthus. Make sure you hold Lilias along the way. You just play strongest. And and eventually, if you can, you pivot into Karthus on 4-2. Otherwise, like, you have to 4-5 it. Like, ideally, you don't really want to 4-5 it. But some games, like, uh, like it just happens, so you have to 4-5 it. And, like, back to the opener. You can play Annie. You can just, like, like I put set here just because it's, like, like set pair as well. Or, uh, like, Gragas and set gives you Bruiser. Uh, if you don't have any, say like you have items on Tarek instead and you just have like nothing else, I'll, I'll put this back. You can put in like any bruiser if you have Gragas, for example, like I, I just put set, you can put like Tom Kench or something, you know, like just any bruiser, just, you're just looking for frontline, guardian. And I put Nar, Urgot, Bard, and Kale here just because all these units are extremely good at standalones. Like Bard has synergy with Dazzler, but Dazzler is not like that impactful early on. Like these un these three units are just really strong. Honestly, like even if you have no synergies in the patch right now, they're just like top notch, like in their respective category for like what you're looking for. Nar is a, like a unit that is strong to just like play on your board. He's just like really beefy. Like does like solid damage. Urgot is Urgot. This guy's always been a demon on stage two. Yeah, you don't even need synergies. You can just like, this is your board. Tarek, Tarek, Rag is Nami. You chuck it in Urgot. Boom. He's, top, he's your top DPS. That would be like Kennen, Tarek. Like you have two Guardian plus your Nami. Three Disco. Boom. Chuck in your Urgot. Done. He's a demon. Yeah, like, like you can do the same with Nara. Although like, I mean, like for obvious reasons, he's weaker than Urgot. And he's the weakest of like the four in this setup. Now there's another unit that you can like put items on is Bard. Bard is extremely strong, like especially non-chosen Bard. I think non-chosen Bard is a demon. He's a, he's a demon standalone. It's really hard to activate his traits, like take advantage of them early anyways. He's just a really solid unit on stage two. Kale as well. Kale is hard to take advantage of. 
like Pentakill is like is like weak early just because of like, the way it works, uh, especially for backliners. Um, Edge Lord is hard to fit in, but like the attack speed is obviously nice, although it's it's still hard to fit in. If you have like Tarek chosen, and you have AP items, you you can put them on Tarek. Like, I, I put like kind of like a mixed items here, just because it's like he's really flexible. He does really well with AP items and really well with frontline items. If you have frontline items in and you don't want to put like AP items on him, so say you have like like Rage Blade is slammable. If you're like playing in the Disco line and leaning towards CF, you can just put in a random Kale as like your backliner for this comp, and you're good to go. She does a lot. Of damage she's like similar to annie in that aspect where it's like you don't really need her trace active. okay we well, annie you kind of need emo active but you don't like need it you, you don't like need like all the trace active for it to be useful she's just like a strong unit uh, okay that covers nar kale uh annie in this setup and bard hey those are, like the, like the main standalone units oh yeah i covered the annie amumu hold on lilia to pivot into karthus karthus kali viego tf uh, it's like pretty standard you know like tf is a, a shitter check you hold namis and terrace along the way uh really easy to pivot into the tf board i was put that here as viable because you have your api items on like vertical executioners is, is, is extremely strong right now uh just like you, you just play like six executioner stuff like that like you have vex if you have like a spot to play into it like you can play into like tf karthus like something you can even play into vex sometimes just like run this as an opener it's just like, a strong opener and like the item slams transfer over Okay, AP items onto like Nami. Later, you pivot off Disco into Vex. Just look for Executioner. You can hold like a Mumu along the way with Tarek. You pivot into the six Executioner board. Just like to recap, like these units are strong to play around with the Disco opener. The Disco unit is just, Disco opener is just strong. Like these are strong standalones. Bruiser with Gragas, obviously. Uh, Kenyon with Tarek for Guardian. Old Lily along the way for Karthus. Disco into TF is really simple. Disco into Vex is just playing strongest into a pivot on 4-1, sometimes 3-5, most likely 4-1. And yeah, I think that about covers it for the like Tarek and Nami slash like Disco opener. On to the next one, it's Olaf. This guy is a monster, like how strong K Sante was last patch. I would say Olaf is the same strength, maybe like potentially stronger. If you take away the Hearthstone tag, I think o or Olaf is for sure stronger. But with the Hearthstone tag, it's it's honestly debatable. Honestly, it's probably probably goes to Heart Steel just because of how broken Heart Steel is. So over here, I have again like like the strong standalone units. But like in the top part, I have the Bruisers as well as the bottom part, I have the the Pentakills. These are the viable like extremely strong Pentakills early. Like depending on your opener, I wouldn't really recommend or like lots like your your first couple of shops. I wouldn't really recommend skipping out on Nar or Kale in a lot of openers just because how strong they are. Here you can see like, the type of items that Olaf uses. If you're trying to play Olaf reroll, this is what I would say is Bis. BT Sterex Titans. You can even go like BT Titans Titans, and you just play as strong as you can. Like AD Bruiser items on Olaf. Like if you have AP items. You can put them onto Kale. You, even if you can't fit in Pentakill, just like APMs on Kale or Bard. Depending on what you have, if you have like Bruisers, you generally want his traits. Pentakill is like not like the strongest trait early on, but it's pretty strong for Olaf in specific, just because of the damage reduction. Like you don't really worry about the the part where you kill five units, like that gives team wide attack speed. But like sort of like the fifteen percent damage reduction on your Olaf is extremely strong just because he's a bruiser. So you want to you can play like bruiser board with Olaf and just have like a random bard as your backline holding like whatever AP items. You know the same for for Kale, more like Merlo adaptive. Like you know I'm just putting like generic AP items into the picture. Uh, you can easily fit in Pentakill. For example, this is one board Pentakill Mosher Bruiser. Like obviously you don't have a set lots of the time but this is just a board kench just like two bruiser like generally you want to hit his traits for him and you just try to build a board as strong as you can with him the main thing with olaf i don't think many people like see the positioning for olaf uh in early stages uh depending on what your items are you can on like sometimes you can just solo frontline olaf like this and have say like kale back back here you can have like your your gragas walking up second something that you just want like him to take mo the most aggro just because of the way he works the lower he gets like the like the stronger he becomes the only issue with this is there are two like units that you really need to watch out for for olaf on stage two and they are extremely strong and popular units it's vi and nami and what these two have in common is cc the olaf falls to cc early on just because like if he has no CC, lots of times he can't go infinite depending on like the items that he has. Nami is just extremely high single target damage with ramping CC in terms of disco because you ramp up attack speed as time goes on. Bai is also a strong person against Olaf just because of the CC and as well as like the high damage output that she has as well as the armor slender. The main thing that you want to watch out for with Olaf is you just try to avoid Vi and Nami as best as you can. Like for example, they have say like this is an extremely common board on stage two. Boom. Most of the time people go here, like the looks sake. Uh, so like for, for this as an example, if you solo frontline your Olaf here and like, these guys start on this, this guy will not live past five seconds. You want him to get hit at the same time. You don't want him to hit him to get hit too much. So depending on what you have, if you can position specifically for someone, it's simply like this. So it's like in this scenario, Bard hits Olaf, Nami hits Gragas. You want to like split the aggro, like you want him to get hit, but you don't want him to get hit too much. 
those like like boom boom like, like they take like their own like two fights stuff like that like this is a favorable way for you to win if you have a backline enough strong backline strong enough to deal with these guys before olaf and bard switch over focus this guy or depending on what your items are the main goal with olaf is you want to get him low but you don't want to get him too low because when he gets too low he might die like you want to push him to the edge while not pushing him to the edge basically like what you can play olaf into is a card this viego akali olaf shares similar items to viego and kale can hold items for Karthus, like ap items on kale bruiser items on olaf and you just play strongest like as strong as you can to until 4-2 and pivot into the board like again the main prerequisite or like condition for switching into this is you try to hold Ilya as best as you can because she's the only one cost on the board you can find nars like relatively easily you can also run nar extremely easily in this setup yeah you don't run Kenin in that board oh so, yeah that covers it for Cartes Viego I, you just four to it uh four five it if you need to ideally not another board that you can place into is Ari Zed although I wouldn't really recommend like you can play into it just because Ari super fan flex with like a melee carry they share also like similar items with Olaf but, like I wouldn't recommend this because like you, ideally in this setup you want to have to hold Kenin as well which is kind of hard to hold with, like two units all the time like needing because like two gold sometimes like you need to make it, uh like you need to sell both for intervals and you need to sell one for interval it's really hard to hold i said like ideally six gold uh like two star two star along the way or like getting them along the way uh till four two and you can pivot into this but it's like is a viable option with like same same way as before like uh like ap items here onto Ari, like bruiser items onto Zed. Depending on like your board and spot you can like swap units to say like a like garen garen is a really strong unit that uses similar items to olaf you can just run as a frontliner. Same setup. You just you, you can use like bruiser items for, as a frontliner. I have like Nar as well. You can like switch to Nar. Like I'm just I put like the items I put here like aren't like their bis bis for okay like this is probably like Nar bis and like the Kaisa bis. So some of them are, but it's like you get like the general idea of like what items like are acceptable or viable on like certain units. Garen being one of them. Like so like ideally like the two cost upgrades of Olaf in my opinion would be Garen and Nar. It's a lot easier to switch into Nar than it is to Garen. But if you have the spot for it where you can like put in like Sentinel and stuff like that, it's definitely definitely look for it. I've covered Viego Karthus, pivot from this spot. Uh Zed Ari. These are strong standalones behind Olaf. Oh, also another one is or you can play this into Riven or Yone. Um lots of the time I feel like the more common like the commonly known way to play into Riven or Yone is sort of like an open into three five. You can easily play like strongest board into Riven and Yone if your spot like it's more so like an item recognition thing if your items are better for ribbon or yone you, like you can just play this opener into it like, you just play strongest into it you can three five or you can four one thing on your spot uh ribbon you don't really need to farm eight bit stacks early just because it's like you, you pivot into eight bit like like say like three five four one it's like you're getting stacks like really fast anyways and like pretty soon you just want to like these units are definitely like, like these rules are extremely viable you just want to like figure out like ways to get into them if like your spot is good for them and lots of that is just really item recognition item economy recognition and whether it's good for you to get into them just like to summarize 80 items on Viego, AP items from like say Kale or like a random bard onto Karthus. I don't really recommend into Ari super flex because you need to hold one two to get into it. It's definitely possible. Olaf's strongest or Olaf's like a kind of sacking into three five or four one for Yone Riven is good just because like the items that they like they share similar items. Like Olaf's a strong holder. Yeah, I think that covers it for about that one. This one is Vi. Vi got buffed this patch and she is extremely strong she is a bruiser like not so much like a tank she can't really drain tank in the same way olaf can but she does a, f a lot of damage ideally you want to activate her traits monster gives her omni vamp and punk is just like extra stats you don't need to hit either or you don't need to hit both in, in order to play her she's just strong uh here i put Vi for with jinx just for punk's sake and senna as like a viable backliner to look for this you can also go or like send like you can put ap ons on senna if you have some otherwise you can just go like buy with like random bard in the back random kale in the back like again like these units will come up as a common trend in a lot of the openers just because they're really strong standalone units that don't really need their traits active and they're sort of like like they're pretty decent like naked backliners as well as viable ap item holders when you use like when you have like a mix of items sometimes if that's like one way uh like these backline nar as well strong unit gives mosher i'll put like jinx senna here for like synergy's sake you can put eight items in senna like senna is in my opinion not as strong as bard senna sort of like kind of neat in my opinion needs true damage active to to like really be strong true damage is like a big part of damage as well as the mana 
mana reduction increases her DPS a lot. But yeah, treat like Vi as how you would treat. Don't treat Vi as like a drain tank bruisery. Treat her as like a damage bruisery. Like you still want to protect her if you can. Sometimes like you don't really have a choice and you have to frontliner. But yeah, you can play this like with Set, for example, uh, or Urgot. Vi Urgot is an extremely strong opener. Mosher, like they're both super strong units without like their other traits, uh, and they share a strong unit. They share uh, a trait together, so like you, that's like a super strong opener. You can like set plus bruiser, position it like this sort of, put like by here as like a second hit after these guys, and you just treat it as like a damage dealer. You can have like a backliner with KL, like a random KL, random bard. And you, if you watch my stream, you can see like me playing an opener like this like a decent amount if you can, or if I have like, the spot for it. Bard is just really strong. Yeah, I, like what you ideally want to play this into is Vi is like not like this strong it. Like she she's like really mid stage three, strong stage two. So uh, I doubt you'll like win streak with Vi stage three lots of the time, like a relatively competent lobby. Uh, and yeah, you just play this. You can like same reason for, for this. You have, like viable backliners that you can hold items into or hold AP items into to play into Karthus. Uh, Vi can use Bruisery items. That, like Viego can share. Just make sure you hold again for Carthus Viego. Just make sure you hold Lilias along the way. Uh, you can play. I put Zed Ezreal here as a duo, just because it's like this is the best AD flex line in my opinion. Uh, and with that, it's just like you just play like by set boom boom. Like play either strongest into this, into this on four two, like from a healthy spot, or you playing hard still mid game pip into this four two. Pretty easy transition. Like, you know, like BT on Zed, IE on Ezreal. Titans is always like it's like not like the best thing on Zed. Uh, but like you know, like you say like BT IE with like this hard still setup, you can just go. I mean, I as real BTZ and you'll get like more items along the way. And here it's sort of like the general gist of like what kind of items they want. I will cover one thing I will mention in the AD flex line is I do think our anti heal is again like a necessity in this meta, as in like like basically every single meta. Uh like you can red buff Ezreal, but in my opinion, I recommend I for Giant Slayer just because of the way Ezreal works now. Like in the metas like this, where it's like you want you like the first wave is extremely, extremely important and red buff did get nerfed, so it's like against like TF, like you want to blow, like blow up their clump ASAP. Like I've had I've personally found like a lot more success with more damage oriented rather than like red buff. Like so like uh, heavier on the damage side and it's like not that big of a difference here uh, you can also play this into ribbon again you just play like strongest like ie bt uss by eventually pivot into ribbon from three five or four one yeah same as yone same same concept that applies there this one is annie i mentioned earlier that any reroll is playable if you natural a bunch of annies at the start of the game you can commit to any reroll if you're committing to any reroll i personally wouldn't really recommend not committing from spell weaver annie but like sometimes like you just have to take spell weaver annie and yeah when you have to take spell weaver annie you better jam in the amu because her with emo and without emo are like two completely different units. Here, like the Annie opener, I talked about this in the disco setup, where like you can just play this around disco, Mumu, Tarek, boom, and play this. That's a strong opener just because like the disco is frontline plus attack speed, what she wants. Uh, you can play this into the super fan opener. Her item is Shul Gauntlet now. It like, got changed like a couple patches ago, but like she's still strong. Just make sure like you really want the emo trait active. You can go like emo chosen Annie, just tempo with like super fan, and you can play this into. Twisted Fate slash Karthus. Twisted Fate, like ideally from like this setup. Karthus, ideally from this setup. You can play this setup into Karthus. Again, just hold Lilia's. And you can play this setup into Twisted Fate. Again, just hold Nami's and Terex. Like you just, it's just playing the other comp. Each other's comp is like one cost check. And you just need to recognize like which one your spot is better for and which one is like better like in the current lobby. So say like Twisted Fate is extremely contested. Uh, you'll maybe like you, you can just put eight hands on Annie and just like eventually pivot into Karthus, Viego, Kali. Karthus, Viego, Kali seems super contested. You can maybe pivot into TF and you just itemize slightly more towards TF. The main thing is TF can't really use like bruisery items whereas Karthus comp can because you have Viego. Another thing you can play into is Vex, like Executioner's Vex again. I talked about this setup in the Disco one. This, play around like, you know, like a Mumu eventually pivot into Vex, like six Executioners, ideally Vex reroll as your primary and you just pivot into that later. Uh, From this setup, you can go with super fans into, you can also play Seraphine reroll. If the spot is good for it, Seraphine is situational in my opinion. Super fan slash like early Shoujin slash Nashers uh, and you can look for Seraphine. Seraphine has an extremely good matchup into Twisted Fate just because of like the nature that of Twisted Fate, like you clump up with your balls and it's Seraphine is backline access. Car TS Twisted Fate is a comp that excels in front to back and struggles in comps where you have easy access to the backline. Seraphine is good into Twisted Fate. Uh, okay, honestly, not that good into Karthus, depending on how strong of a Seraphine you are. The thing that Seraphine struggles with is killing the one man, one in armies or one woman armies, aka Ribbon. Like she has an extremely hard time with that, but Seraphine is strong in uh, AO like AoE damage, slash healing, and she makes up for her lack of single target with Ari. Getting to Ari, like itemize Ari 
is like you know like uh, like a whole other spot it's like kind of hard to get into it's like pretty deep into the game but yeah like seraphine alone versus the like the one-man army units within yone she has a tough matchup into those you can also place into bard i don't really recommend playing this in a bard but like if you natural a bunch of bards along the way while running this you can look to go into bard like it's just super fan bard i said bard reroll i personally recommend playing like when you do play bard i'd recommend only playing it from like say something like like martial progress and your opener is good for bard like but like bard kaisa you got natural also super fans like bard kaisa mf the yasuo opener is like there's multiple ways to play this uh if you're rerolling yasuo you really really want true damage emblem or true damage chosen is because when you're rerolling Yasuo, you want to push vertical true damage for him, like like to scale into late game. Uh, if you're carrying Yasuo as an as a, just like an early game item holder, I personally think Edge Lord is better, just because you have a lot of easy ways to access true damage in Super Fan. I mean, in, in Canon and Echo, like a lot like they're both viable ways to access true damage as well. Whereas fitting in three Edge Lord is a lot harder. It's you have to play around Ribbon and Yone. Lots of times you can't hold them early because they're extremely expensive. You don't only have to run Ribbon you have, and uh, Yone. You have to run Ribbon and Yone, or one of them with Kale. Kale is pretty easy, to, is like a lot easier to find. You can just put in Kale in the back. Uh, three Edge Lord. He is extremely strong with three Edge Lord for mid game. Uh, again, like in my last video for openers, Isuo is the type of unit that needs frontline. So like ways that you can like different front lines that you can play with him is say like you just have like a Sentinel front line. Like here you have upgrade Sentinels. You can just playing like this, just have him get hit second. You don't have Edge Lord in this setup a lot of the time or true damage. Like you only have like one or the other. So say it's like board is like this. Uh, like this is fine. You have like edge lord like no true damage and you'd rather have true damage if you can but it's like not always like accessible like boom echo uh Kesante for potentially access to heart steel or you can do it wherever you want with heart steel just lots of money you can place it into ribbon you can place it into yone place it into ezreal zed hang on your item slams like iebt extremely flexible between like all three of the comps ribbon uses that I, like iebt yone is iebt ezreal uses ie like that's a viable way to play this um another way is super fan is super fan item is Sterax. Sterax is extremely strong early. Uh, he's a melee bruiser unit that gets hit. So Sterax helps a lot in the early game with true, da uh, true damage accessibility through Kennen. And this is another opener, say like this. This is a uh, pretty strong opener. Super fan Isuo with true damage plus edgelord. You're just activating both these traits. You just have like, say like IE BT slam or stuff like that. You can place into Karthus, Viego, Kali. Like the BT, uh, like bruiser items on Viego, like AP items from Kale onto Karthus or like bruiser items onto like a Kali. If you have that upgraded, I, I would recommend it Viego. I think Viego is much stronger than a Kali. If you have the choice between all three of them to start. Yeah, and this is pretty, pretty simple way to get into this. You just run super fan, you eventually drop cannon for Nar, which is this super fan uses instead of cannon. Again, you just play strongest with whatever openers you can into 3 5 ribbon or 3 5 yone, 4 1 ribbon, 4 1 yone, hard steel into 4 2, ideally 4 2 as you said. Sometimes you have to 4 5, like it's just Soviet, like you need the money to before you roll. You, you just need the money. Super fan into Diego Karthus Kali. That's about it for Yasuo. Next one is Evelyn. Evelyn is super situational. I really don't recommend playing Evelyn without like some, like a Nico drop. Her super fan item is Hodge. I don't have Hodge here just because I'm showing you like what kind of items you can make on her. Like BT works, adapted. Like you can put AP items on her. You can put just like AP slash like healing ideally. And yeah, I would really only recommend playing with Nico. But like if you do have a setup for for Evelyn, she is extremely strong. Again, you just need to watch out for the melee killers, Vi and Nami. They are the melee killers on stage two, just because the the CC and high damage output and what you can play is into depending on your slams are viego and Karthus again like super simple transition into it you just play strongest uh you upgrade your chosen along the way like eventually you can easily switch this to like, say for something like, like seraphine which is why i put her here then you can like go boom straight into like Karthus viego on like four two or four five ideally four two another thing you can do is you can play evelyn chosen into seraphine depending on your item slam so you have like nashers super fan so like your guy would be set up like this oh yeah two crowd diver is a viable trait because it, it, they buffed it this patch so it's like you know um, she's strong with two crowd diver. It, it does it does a lot more damage. Your items are like this. Nasher, Shojin, Hodge. Uh, it's fine on Evelyn. You just pivot this into Seraphine. Seraphine reroll if, if the spot is good for it. Now, I don't think I need to go too much into Evelyn just because like she basically only one opener. And I'd say I'd say like, these are like, basically the only two comps like you want to ideally look for when, with this opener. And, uh, she's like a Nico check. This comp is quirky. Quirky is extremely similar to last patch in terms of early game setup. Super fan is uh, super fan items DP uh, similar items as before on him. And you, ideally you just go super fan. Kaisa, like this setup, you can go into Ezreal Z, uh, or you can go into like super fan R reflex. I mean, uh, yeah, like melee, melee warrior R reflex depends on what your spot is good for and what you hit, as well as your items. Another opener is like this, this one up here, Orky into with heart steel and steel into Ezreal Z, super strong. Again, if you want to pivot into like RE, RE Z, you really need to hold the noobs along the way, which is why I don't really recommend going from like the heart steel opener with Corky into RE Z, just because you need to find Kennen and Lee again. 
which is really hard later. And you can also play this into Yone. You just play strongest with like IE, say like IE Hodge slammed on Corky. You just play strongest into a 3 5 pivot into Yone or 4 1 pivot into Yone. And same here with Samira. You like IE, it's like say like Chia, it's like DB or something like that. Just pivot into Samira, like 6 Executioner Samira or Executioner Samira is stronger than Country Samira, but like sometimes you can play Country Samira as well. Uh, it's really easy to fit in this guy uh, early games because if he shares Masha with Seth, they're both extremely strong 3 cost units uh, in this early stages. And you can just play this into Country or Executioner Samira. Yone, uh, that's about it for Corky. This line into this, this line into this, this line into this, or this line into this. You just need to know like what you need to hold along the way in order to play into them. Next one is Jinx, uh, similar to before as well. AD item holder, you want to look for ways to activate her traits. Uh, rapid Fire, Aphelios, uh, it's like one set that's really easy way to fit into um, Hard Steel. Hard Steel is extremely strong open opener early just because it's Hard Steel, it's Econ. Yeah, you can play this into Ezreal Z through Hard Steel. You just play strongest into executioners or got along the way country or executioners to mirror focus you can play this into ribbon or yone same way uh 80 items just play strongest such like hard steel for econ uh pivot into this on three five or four one uh yasuo ideally true damage chosen if you're re-rolling olaf uh you can go pentakill or bruiser i've seen like a bunch of ways work like bruiser bruiser too big to fail is extremely strong um gargantuan titans olaf rule is extremely strong ideally you want to push like more bruisers with if you're re-rolling olaf like vertical bruiser rather than like vertical penta any rule is viable depending on how many Annie's you have, uh, you see like super fan Annie into like five spell weaver later. Uh, your dual carry is eventually Ari slash like Sona. You really want emo trait active with four emo blue buff is better with two emo Shojin is better, but her items are really flexible. You basically just want emo active with AP slash like stats that she can use. Diego Karthus, uh, Kali should be here too, but like these are the two other primaries like AP items of Karthus. Diego, just make sure you are holding Lily along the way, the hardest unit to find in this comp. PF, I covered with Disco Opener. Ezreal Z, I covered the multiple different ways that you can play into Ezreal Z. I think Ezreal Z is much stronger than Caitlyn compared to Caitlyn. Z is much stronger, like much, much stronger than Caitlyn, uh, especially in this meta. It works. Like Z is extremely high single target against lots of these comps. You need extremely high single target, like versus Yone and Ribbon. And Z and Ezreal are both really high single target. Uh, Ezreal's high AoE damage on the third blast. Prior to the third blast, she is extremely high single target. Ari, I put here for a super fan. Like sometimes you also do play KDA. You can like lots of times when you're doing when you play KDA, it's more so like uh, you don't like aim for KDA. You want to like aim for something else, like a Karthus Viego, but you mi you miss and you only have Ari. So lots of times you have Shojin and you go like like vertical KDA, like, like seven KDA Ari Akali. Like this, I would be really surprised if this wins unless like you're ten KDA. So, like most of the times, just a top four and get out. Uh, Bard Kaisa viable from the correct spots. I think they are augment required or augment checks for you to. Play. march of progress uh like some sort of like augment to set you up for that twitch is twin terror a twin terror check naru roll is strong with two healthy i don't really recommend playing naru roll outside of two healthy ribbon roll is one of the best comps of the patch any roll is also an extremely strong comp five country is not as strong as before not like the strongest version in my opinion but it is definitely like a viable way to play this uh the six executioner board is much stronger in my opinion but it's like you know it's like a different setup vex this unit is so fucking broken this unit shits on a lot of things. Melee carries especially. They hit melee carries having extremely hard time versus Vex. Like she's a twin terror, or you just play her like through six executioner. Alright, bye bye.